This right here is an e-stop, also known as an emergency stop. Probably one of the most important things you should have if you don't want something like this to happen. In this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to wire and set up your e-stop. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Kevin. I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel. I also have a master's robotics and AI bundle, as well as a robotics projects bundle to help you get started in your career. If you go along with a case like mine, you see that there's four screws that you have to remove. So go ahead and first remove that. So when you open it up, you see there's four connections. On one side is NC, the other side is NO. What NC means is normally closed. So this picture here shows when it's not pressed and the cables are connected here. And once you press it down, it will lose the connection so it's no longer connected. And O, on the other hand, means normally opened. So this means that when it's not pressed, it's not connected. And once you press it, then everything will be connected. Now, if you have a simple motor like me set up, you could have the power supply, the live wire, or the 24 volt go to the NC, and that will power the motor directly. Then the ground will go to the ground of the motor. So you can see how my two wires connected here. Just turn this screw down to clamp the cable down here. So let's say I have a motor running and I want to stop it. You can see it stops it immediately. So what do you do if you have a lot of motors and maybe a very high amperage requirement like for a humanoid robot? Now, when you buy an e-stop, one of the main important specs to pay attention to is this right here, the current rating. So this is rated for 10 amps, which means that if your system is way beyond 10 amps, then relying solely on the e-stop to stop your system could be pretty dangerous. So this is where something like a contactor comes in. This specific one is a 24 volt normally open contactor, and this one can support up to 25 amps. So the way this works is up here on the top, you have two cables that come in and it could come out on the bottom under only one condition is that the coil right here has to be powered. So this coil is specifically powered using 24 volt DC. And here's a visual of how this works. So your 24 volt when it's off, this coil is not powered. So you can see these two cables that come in are not connected. But the moment this coil is powered with this 24 volt, you can see the cables are connected, then the power could pass through. Really quick, if you're looking to make your own PCB for a custom e-stop or relays, you could come check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. You could come here to PCB Instant Quote. Once you're here, fill out the information like your board type, size, quantity, material, and so on. Then once you're done, just come up here and submit your part for review. Okay, so back to our example with the contactor, but now we have everything connected, including the motor. So the way it works is typically you'll see A1 and A2 as the pins for the coil. So you have those wired one to the 24 volt and one to ground. And then we have our two main lines, our red and black line on the top that will pass through the contactor to the motor here. The thing is right now the power can't pass through the contactor because the coil is not activated. So once you press the start button, you could pass through the power that goes through the coil, then everything on the top can pass through on the bottom, then the motor can be powered. Now, when you press the e-stop, what happens is the coil power gets cut off and therefore the power to the motor gets cut off, then everything would stop. So what I didn't tell you earlier is that the previous assumption is that you have to keep holding the green button down because these are called momentary push buttons, which means that when you press it, it's going to release. So what does that mean exactly? So you can see right here, this is our example that we went over previously. So what happens now when you press the green button is we have this additional blue wire here. So when the green button is pressed, the coil is powered. But what happens is now we have a line here, the blue line that comes down and then passes through the e-stop that will then keep the coil powered. So this part is going to keep the coil powered and keep this green button green. And this is what we call the concept called holding. This allows you to not have to keep pressing the green button and it keeps the power so you know that your system is on. Now, what happens when you press the e-stop? You can see all of these connections will get disconnected and the light for the green button should also turn off. So the only way to turn it back on would be to release the e-stop and then press the green button again. You can see right here, this is an example of something else you could use instead of a contactor. This is called a solid state relay. This specific one here, you can see you could have an input of 3 to 32 voltage DC, and the amperage is up to 25 amps. 
So here's an example of how you would wire it. You can see we have the DC power go in from the top and then output to the electrical equipment here. And then on the bottom, this is a control like the coil we talked about. This is the part that would energize it to allow power to pass through. So some important things to check that I've been emphasizing are things like how many connections does it support, the coil voltage, and if it's DC or AC, and also the max amperage that it supports. Previously, I only showed you how to wire the NC part for the e-stop. There could be a secondary use for the NO that we didn't touch, and that would be if you were to connect it to your MCU like an Arduino, you could connect it to the ground and a digital input pin. Then what we want to do is set the pin to input pull up. And then when the e-stop is not pressed in your software, then you know that the pin is at low. And then when the e-stop is pressed, the pin will go to high. So the benefit of this is you have some software state check of your e-stop, then you could take the appropriate action in your software.